Welcome to Jungle Vision, episode 2. Uh, we have to be super snappy, super quick, we've got so much to cover today, it's crazy. Um, first, I've got to say thank you for all the nice comments, very gratefully, it inspires, inspires us to keep going. Um, also, um, thank you for everyone who has given us tips on how to make e each section of the TV show more like the section it's supposed to be. Um, second, or third, I want to say thanks to the IGA. You guys are, are amazing. Ellen Stevens and Scott Solzer has helped me loads in promoting the very first episode and they're going to do the same with this episode. So thank you so very much. You guys are amazing. Episode 1 got over a thousand downloads in the first three days. We got loads from America, the UK, um, Germany, Israel, France, even Brazil and Chile. Um, and all over the world as well. But after about two days, three days, J Japan was here, here. And all of a sudden they got like 200 downloads out of nowhere. I don't know what happened in Japan, but maybe it got on television, maybe it actually got on Japanese TV. You never know. Hopefully. <laughs> um, right, let's get started with um, Baruch Roberts playing our online zombie game. Hopefully, the zombie won't come alive. Fingers crossed. We hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hello, Brute Roberts. How are you today? Hello, Lewis Kennedy. I'm very well. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Um, I, uh, we want to say thank you uh, for your contribution to episode one with your four-handed sight swap. Uh, no problem. I hate watching myself talk, but I made myself watch it anyway. <laughs> now, you do know what happened, don't you, to Josh last week? Yes, with the zombie. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, it was a disaster, but I have a very strong feeling that this will not happen again. Good, good. So, yeah. Brooke, are you ready to play the game? Yes, I am. But something's happening, Lewis. Brooke? Brooke, are you? Brooke, are you there? Brooke? Oh, not again. Oh, this is a disaster. The zombie's alive again. Sean Livingston, no, I don't know who Sean Livingston is. Uh, won the advanced ring endurance competition at WDF convention. Oh, oh. Alright, so a picture of someone with Vova. Someone with Vova. Friends with Daniel Ladle. Ah, so could you want me on this? I know it's a lot of new ones. Oh, it's just tons of clubs. This has got to be one of the young listeners. Does one of them win the advanced strings? Like Manuel Matash or um, Dominic Ferrand, maybe? You don't want balls, rings, and clubs. I 
honestly don't think the zombie would come back, but it has done. Um, let's move straight on to a documentary of Ollie Roth. Good heart. I think he's just a genius. This is a documentary about Ori Roth from Israel. He was born on the 19th of May 1987. Ori spent most of his life in Par des Hana in Israel living with his parents. When Ori was 28 he moved out of his parents house and now lives in Tel Aviv with his girlfriend. Ori has a job in Tel Aviv where he works as a video editor and a director. Uh, do, a, do a side swap so the guys on the camera can, can guess what you're doing. Ah, without balls. Without balls. Uh, how many balls do you want? Uh, six balls. Six balls. Eight five five. Yeah. Yeah. One more with six balls. With six balls. Nine five five five. Yeah. Those are the most common. <laughs> oh, I remember Ori. This is Ori's house. Oh, I remember. Hello. Happy birthday, Mama. And, and the hello. hello. Hi. No, no, no. <laughs> this is Ori's parents' house. He has three siblings: one older brother and two younger sisters. This is uh, my old one. Oh wow. Hi. Hello, my name's Lewis. Are you okay? Uh, do you know that uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing a documentary on Ori? I don't know if ah. Ori said. No, I. Oh, cool. Ori, you, you, you should check I this picture. Ah, okay. He was awarded. Uh, it was a competition. Yeah. Uh, Four years? Five years ago? No, much more. Like much more? Nine years ago. The, the subject was infinity. And Ori won he, this? He won. I did a video uh, that I do like free balls. Yeah. Uh, all kind of uh, tricks like uh, black and white with uh, like a jumping. Twenty thousand. Uh, thirty. Thirty. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand shekels. Shekels. Yeah. It's like. Eight hundred euros. Uh, uh, no, a bit less, like seven hundred fifty. Wow, that's ridiculous. No. Se seven thousand. Uh, seven thousand euros. Seven thousand euros. Something like that. Thousand. Yeah. Euro. Not hundred. No. No. Se seven thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did he manage to get that much? So, till now he is living out of... <laughs> because it was a bank uh, competition. Wow, that's a crazy amount of money. So Thousands of people uh, uh, did, did apply, apply to the yeah, competition. What's your favorite juggling video? My favorite juggling video? Yes. Wow. I really liked the uh, new shoes by... Uh, 
Isaac Rockefeller. Ah. Uh, you, you remember this one? I do. Hey, I got some new shoes on, and suddenly, and it, because also the tricks are really, really, really good. I like his juggling style also, and uh, it's interesting to know what he's doing today, actually. Um, which juggler would you like to meet that you haven't? I guess Anthony Gatto, for sure. One of my uh, idols, if not the idol. Uh, yeah, it's really, it can be a dream comes true to meet Anthony Gatto, which is uh, probably the best juggler ever. Inspiration to us all. Agreed. Yeah, and um, maybe David Kane because oh Chris Hodge. I want Chris Hodge. Yes. Good answer. I want to meet him. He's one of my idols as well. He's an amazing, an amazing, amazing juggler. Amazing. Yeah. What made you start juggling? Uh, I actually didn't want to juggle at all because since I was born, all I've seen was. Uh, my father juggling, my father juggling, and he told me like, oh, you should try juggling, you should try juggling. But uh, in 1996, when I was uh, nine years old, we did like a big Euro trip for three months, and uh, we stopped at Belgium at my uh, parents' friends, and uh, they, their son, uh, he wanted to learn how to juggle. And my brother already knew, so I was thinking, oh, uh, he wants to know, but and my brother already knew, and so, I want to know too. I tried it and uh, about two days after we started like uh, I did free ball cascade like I hold it for quite a while and uh, we did like s stupid uh, street performance in Belgium mm -hmm. and uh, the Netherlands a bit. Yeah we put a hat and people just put some money and we thought like wow it's amazing. And then after we got back to Israel, we started to practice like uh, much more seriously. And, you uh, and your brother? Yeah, I mean my brother. Yeah, but after two years, more or less, I just like uh, got tired of it and stopped. So uh, about five years later, I picked it up again. And my father, in that time, he like uh, he and two partners. They made like, uh, they established the first Israeli circus, something like that. So uh, lots of uh, shows were there and we were like involved and everything. So that got me also into it. And then we went to the Israeli Jungle Convention and uh, Olga and Vova were there. Olga and Vova Galchenko. Wow. And uh, after the convention they stayed at my place here for about a week. I still have Vova socks, by the way. Wow, no yeah, way! I think so. Unless my mother threw them to the garbage can because they were like uh, super stink. No offense, Vova. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was super, super amazing to see their dedication and their hard work and their self, self thought, self discipline that they can go every day to the gym. We went to the gym. And they were like so strict. We have to practice four hours. We have to do this. We have to do this. We have to do this. One time, Olga, she like uh, she was tired and she didn't do I don't know uh, a part of the training session. So and after the training session, we went to the ice cream to get some ice cream. So uh, Vova said no ice cream for Olga. She didn't finish the practice. Wow. No ice cream. <laughs> and it was like. 15 years old and she was 12 years old so it was really really amazing and it's inspiring to see the how they see the journey how they see in general practicing and stuff wow was Vova's mom and dad there no they were here they were in Israel for like a month just by themselves wow really yeah just skipping from house to house to other jugglers and so, so in the end, did Olga have ice cream? No. <laughs> she didn't? She didn't. We wanted to buy her. We wanted. But he said, no, no ice cream for Olga. Wow, that is madness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, he was very determined. <laughs> no ice cream. Great story. Yeah. I think his main... Talent is not talent, but main uh, virtue 
is concentration because he is very concentrated. It, what other things has Ollie been good at? He's a great painter, drawer. Yeah. Wow, he draws. Fantastic. He could be the best musician I've ever heard because he sings perfect, very, very, very precise. No, you know, and plays whatever. Never, never study any music, but and a very good ear. You can see yeah. by the juggling that every. Also, what he's doing now, the promo, you know, the oh, amazing. editing. Yeah. It's just exactly with the music. Like yeah. if there is a boom here, something with the picture. Yeah, happens. It's what do you think the German community has given Ari? Gave him friends. <laughs> because yeah. most of his friends, for many years, are the jugglers group, the jugglers community. And he really wanted to be close and with his juggling friends. Tell us about Ori as a person, not a juggler. Ah, as a person. He's very, not very, but kind of close, and shy, sharp, <laughs> very precise, good heart, very, very generous. Always uh, like to help. That's an awesome in the, a Sababa interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Very, You're very welcome. Grateful. So what is this piece of paper you have? Uh, I wrote when Ori just uh, started uh, juggling and I saw that he is uh, really good in juggling. I started to write some, some points. So it's a date. Uh, it was 15 uh, to August 96. Wow. that he learned the cascade, just the simple cascade. And then on the end of September, he did four balls. And I've, I've been told that you were one of the first uh, jugglers in Israel. Right. How did that happen? It was kind of, for me, it was kind of hobby. I just, I spent two years in uh, San Francisco, in the United States. In San Francisco, uh, every weekend, to a juggling meeting, and uh, everybody is, you know, teach each other. Yeah. And that was the beginning for me. Just again, it it um, it was kind of hobby. And when I came back to Israel, I, w I was looking for somebody that I can, uh, you know, passing or something with. I, I was looking for a juggler in Israel, and it was kind of desert in Israel. <laughs> a year after, I read in the newspaper a kind of workshop in Tel Aviv for a street, street paper, uh, theater, and it was written also juggling. And it was the first time that I saw in Israel something that juggling. So I came to kind of audition, and uh, the guy asked me what you what, what, what kind of uh, things that you can bring to, to the workshop? I said, I know some juggling. And he said, okay, show me your juggling. And then he said, okay, you will be the guide in the workshop. Because wow. nobody in Israel knows how to juggle. Ori started to recognize as a hero in the Israeli juggling scene for organizing the Israeli conventions and establishing the first circus in Israel together with two other partners. Ori told me off camera that his dad is probably the most important part of his juggling life. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, <all right>. <laughs> 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 oh, 
the stars may say they always be the push it to me It's kinda sad how you lost what you had to never go to heaven again So it's that hey, so G-O You gotta get us out of here, it's so sad hey, so G-O It's gonna get a hot in here, it's so sad hey What is the best moment in your life, also in your juggling? When I went to the first, my first EJC in 2004 in uh, Carvin in France and uh, I got the 5 balls endurance and it was really like a, a big 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 boost for me to keep on going and improve more. And also the, the convention itself was truly amazing, it was a huge one, it was like 4,500 people it was yeah, really amazing. Awesome. In many ways. Would you consider yourself as quite a competitive person? Yeah. I think I'm quite competitive. Um, you want to be the best? I wanted to be the best. Until Baum Wallen came along <laughs> and <laughs> What do you think about the WGF? I really liked it. Yeah, I really like the fact that it's like a competition with the points and everything and deductions and all this kind of stuff. I think it's a nice way to put it and to show it to the world and I think it got a lot of new great talents. This is where Ori works as a video editor and the director. I believe Ori is one of the best, if not the best, juggling video editors in the world. He was telling me he got into video editing for a few different reasons. One being the rise of juggling videos in 2003 to 2005. Ori got motivated from the Thomas Deet series and the Children Brother videos. Hello. Hello. You're documenting Ori? I am, yes. So busy. So cool. Me? Busy. <laughs> Uh, one editing room. One editing room. Oh, hello, sorry. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> and this man, this guy. This man. Yes. This man is Arnold, creative manager. Right. He's doing a documentary about Ori. Can you lie a little bit about Ori for just one minute? Ori is uh, <laughs> uh, the editing room that we like to edit. Ah, okay. I edited that yesterday, actually. Yes. It's like the main game of the Israeli football league. Yeah. For, I think, two weeks from now, more or less. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, the they have to they correct the colors a bit. Ah, uh, okay. Back in 2003, Ori taught himself how to video edit. He used to use Windows Movie Maker, but in 2005 he moved on to Adobe Premiere. They've changed that bit, haven't they? Yeah. Wow, Ori man, that's amazing! <laughs> How long did, did this take you? Uh, this one took me about two hours. Wow! Three hours, more or less. Crikey Moses! <laughs> This is my uh, ukulele. Here comes the sun. <laughs> I can show something nice that I made for the volleyball. League oh yes. And that I directed and edited. Volleyball, volleyball. Are you ready? Let's see. Like a week. Wow. Big difference, isn't it? That one looks so much better. Design differently. He's a multi talented uh, guy. He's, he's super smart. Uh, he's funny. He's yeah. funny as hell. Uh, yeah, sometimes during work and from other stuff, I get inspired by him. He's like. like I genuinely think he's the best editor I've ever seen, and I worked with a few. I'm glad I met him. I'm glad he's my friend. <laughs> so, yeah. That was amazing, boss. Thanks. After visiting Ori's walk, we went to meet Sally and Alan in the center of Tel Aviv.
So um, when I started Jagger ten, uh, 10 years ago, uh, I saw some uh, juggling in Israel on YouTube and I, and I watched so many videos of all we got, so he like became my hero, more or less. When we started juggling, we were like a group of five kids. We lived near Ori's house and we always knew his skills of filming and editing. So we used to go with him, we, have, we even went one, once with Lewis, we filmed a movie, and yeah. he always had it's to call edit. It's called Edit Beast. The Beastles, the Beastles, the Beastles, the Beastles is what they're called, so essentially. We're coming with the lyrics and we're coming to show, show, show up with them so on time. <laughs> Always when he wanted help, we were invited to his house, he helped us, he get, gave us tips, tips, he uh... Yeah, if someone called him and said like, uh, I need a show or jugglers for a gig, he called us and... Um, he I helped seen, out. Yeah, since then we, we meet a lot, we eat a lot together, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> he pays every time. He pays. <laughs> yeah, always a gentleman. Ori is our father. Yeah, he's like our father. Um, how many jugglers do you think Ori has inspired? Uh, I think more than 1,000. Wow. Yeah. Did he inspire you? Oh, he inspired me a hell of a lot. You see? Yeah. That's it. Because he's such an... He's very creative. Uh, he, his editing is amazing. His jugging is very clever. Uh, his technical juggling is in a very high level. A few years ago, yeah, after the um, after meetings and after juggling meetings in Tel Aviv, we used to take the train back together, and he would drive us home, and it would be like 20 minutes out of his way. Just drive. We were little kids. He used to drive us all the way home and go back to his because house. Because he wants kids to juggle. He wants the juggling community in Israel to be bigger. And How much do you think uh, Ori has affected the juggling community? In the in Israel and worldwide. Oh, in Israel, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like a hundred. Yeah. His whole family also. He's part of a family that uh, really made the juggling in Israel go forward, a lot. And um, yeah, he's part of the organizers of the IJC. So uh, and also the mini conventions. You should come, Louis. You should come. You should come. Yeah. All of you. It's as come. fun as IJC. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
from everyone I have spoken to about Ori. They have all said something along the lines of, he is a genius and a very kind person. Ori and his family have influenced and contributed immensely to the German scene in Israel. I honestly believe Ori has inspired thousands of jugglers all over the world from his videos and contributions to the juggling community. Video filming aspect. <laughs> yeah, you can use it. Hello, welcome back to the studio. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the documentary by Ori Roth. Eh, bye. From, you know what I mean. Um, now let's move on to a small video of Joe Fisher um, with some Norwegian madness going on in the background. We hope you enjoy. <laughs> Joe Fisher is an amazing juggler and an amazing person. He he inspires me immensely. Um, so let's go back to see if Brooke Roberts escapes from the room. To get out of this room, you must answer three out of four questions correctly. Otherwise, you will be trapped in here forever. <laughs> What spin rotations is he doing 
between the back bosses. He's a five or back bosses, there's a five up seven twenty, and he does five or back bosses again. So and that's the only time he does pirouettes, I think. There's two pirouettes! <laughs> there's someone very special in the community and he is very, very good with wads. He got to the semi-finals of Countdown, which is a TV show, a proper TV show, and he won a French Scrabble tour tournament, um, and he doesn't even speak French. Um, he came up with these wad games. Uh, each question, each answer is a juggler's name. Um, when you get to the questions, pause the screen, take a print screenshot, Tell me your answers. Let me know. Send me a message. There are three big videos coming out this year. Um, let's speak to the organisers and get a bit more detail about these videos. Hey guys, so it's almost time for part three to be released. I'm so excited about this one. We have a bald look, we have um, an incredible section on just 8 ball juggling, crazy crazy tricks, um, I'm excited to see how far we can push 8 ball juggling. Um, there's going to be a few more balance sections, there's going to be a section on Alex Barron, a little interview we did um, back in March, and we've even got him to send us a really close call on 14 balls. I think it was about 12 catches, maybe 13 catches. Um, incredible stuff. Incredible. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's going to be about half an hour long. I'm hoping to get it released about late November time. And yeah, I just really can't wait to show you guys what we've been working on. Bye. Hey guys, uh, my name is Zach McAllister and I'm here talking with you today about my latest project, 18 Hands, a juggling film. 18 Hands is essentially a juggling collaboration video with nine different jugglers, and it showcases some of my favorite jugglers from across America. The filming process has been going on for maybe about a year. Uh, I've been traveling around a little bit and filming some. Some people filmed their own, but uh, it's all come together and I think you'll be very surprised to see some of the juggling you'll see in this video. To list off some of the names of the people in the video, we have uh, Spencer Androli, Chris Hodge, Zach McAllister, Jonah Botvinick Greenhouse, Matan Presbury, Delaney Bayless, AJ, Lucas Adveris, and Stephen Doubt. Big shout out to Lewis Kennedy for letting me uh, be part of his big TV show, Juggle Vision, and I will see you all later. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Marc Schneider. I'm a juggler from the northeastern of France. And uh, I want to take a, a little bit of time in this awesome video from Lewis 
to talk a little bit about what is my very first big video. Um, since March 2017, I, w I worked very hard on it. Uh, the video includes different sections, uh, which are about uh, uh, creating tricks, also traveling, uh, but uh, also pushing the limits, and of course having fun. Um, it's uh, the very first time I make uh, a big project like that, so I hope you will like it and uh, the video will be up very soon so stay tuned and if you want to know more about me uh, you can find me on the social media uh, if Lewis can put uh, somewhere on the screen so thank you uh, and uh, see you very soon goodbye uh, so my brother is just uh, hello uh, disturbing How are me you? and he uh, he has a, a very or... nice beard and uh, I, comme toi. I don't on mange le poulet chicken big video and this is my mom well those three videos look mega um next on juggle vision we've got a history lesson by david kane he is going to be explaining three old props. David, thank you so much for filming this and sending me it. It was very nice and kind of you. Um, we hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm David Kane and we're here at the Museum of Juggling History. And today I want to talk to you about uh, the juggler Salerno. Uh, Salerno was born in 1869 and he was one of the original gentleman jugglers. He was from Germany. And besides being an incredible juggler uh, and performer, he was also an inventor. And uh, some of his inventions had nothing to do with juggling, but many of them did. And I want to show you three of his props today uh, that were innovative um, in their day. I want to start off with one of his plates. Uh, this is a, a Bakelite plate. Bakelite was a, a very early form of plastic, um, which was invented in 1907. And so uh, Salerno used some plates that were made out of Bakelite. Uh, they may, may have been one of the first, if not the first, uh, plastic juggling props. And so uh, it's a very, very cool plate. Uh, uh, this plate was passed on from Salerno to Bobby May, uh, who then passed it to Paul Bachman, and then it came to me from Paul Bachman. And so that's a, a really cool plate. It's not that incredible. Uh, but it is neat that's one of the earliest plastic juggling props. But the next two, I think you're really going to uh, like. Uh, they're, they're very, uh, very, very interesting. Um, and the, the first of those is this. This is uh, one of Salerno's lighted clubs. Um, and you may think that uh, lighted clubs are a fairly new invention, but they've been around for a long time. In fact, Morris Cronin... Uh, patented the first uh, uh, internally lighted clubs in 1897. Uh, but Salerno started using them uh, at least as early as 1905. And <clears throat> uh, this club uh, appears to be a resin-covered cheesecloth. Um, and inside of it, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, are the electrical components. But uh, it's a pretty neat club. Uh, and you would turn the club on by pressing inside the knob here, and there's a switch that you can press on and off. And uh, let me see if I can very carefully remove the insides of this. <clears throat> and so as I was saying, uh, you would push, put your finger inside and press this. Uh, there was a very early flashlight battery uh, inside of here, and there were four bulbs. One of them is still intact here. There would be one there, uh, one here, one here, and one here. And uh, so that was what was inside of that club. And so it's really, really neat. Uh, as I said, he started using them uh, at least as early as 1905. And in 1912, he made a version that changed colors 
as you juggled them. So they were the first uh, color-changing uh, electrically uh, powered props. And so uh, that's really, really cool. Uh, this, after Slurno moved on to the uh, color-changing ones, he passed these to, on to uh, the Juggling Jewels, who were a uh, British uh, juggling team of five women that started uh, performing in 1912. Uh, and from, <coughs> pardon me, from there they went to uh, Bobby May, and then to Claude Crumley, and then to Paul Bachman, and then to me. And so that's the second of Salerno's inventions. And finally, we have probably the most unique one, and that is this. This is a self-lighting candle. And uh, the outside is Bakelite, once again. Uh, and let me first tell you how it was used. It was in a uh, <clears throat> candlestick, and Salerno would uh, hold the candlestick. He would flip it, flip the candle out of it. Uh, as it flipped in the air, it would light on fire, and he would catch it balanced on his forehead. Um, and so it was not just an amazing juggling trick. It was an amazing juggling trick, but it was also a very, really special effect. And... Uh, <clears throat> It's a pretty, actually a very novel invention. Uh, so you have the outer sleeve, you have an inner sleeve, that's this brown sleeve here, and then inside of it <coughs> is a mercury switch. Um, and uh, when the candle would get into a horizontal position, the mercury would uh, complete a circuit from a, the, the flashlight battery that's here all the way to a flash bulb igniter, which is here. And there would be some uh, easily uh, flammable wicking here that would catch on fire. Um, but uh, it was, I'm sure it was an amazing thing for audiences to see um, that would go from unlit to tossing the air, light on fire, and land balanced on Salerno's forehead. And so uh, those are our three props of Salernos that we have here at the uh, Museum of Juggling History. Uh, they're each uh, very uh, innovative in their own way. And um, uh, I think that we need to remember Salerno not just as an amazing juggler, but as an amazing inventor as well, um, and give him uh, the proper recognition for that. And so I hope this has been uh, informational, educational, and uh, entertaining, and my name is David Kane. Thank you very much. High five, David. Very grateful for that. Um, let's see how Brooke Roberts is getting on. It's a zombie. The zombie is hungry. Prepare her food whilst juggling two balls.
Next up we have the game show Who Wants to Be a Chicken Willy? We hope you enjoy. Hello there, uh, welcome to Who Wants to Be a Chicken Willy? Uh, we're here with Luca, Julius and Felix. Are you guys ready to play the game? Absolutely, yep. <laughs> awesome. Right, you guys can open question one. Okay. Um, you have to tell me who this juggler is. Okay. Pe Patrick Elmer? No. I'll go with Emil Dahl. Yes, I'm wow. impressed. That would have been my second guess. <laughs> because true. these shoes remind yeah. me sort yeah, of of Emil. Yeah. No, like, I don't know why, but okay. And he's yeah. quite tall as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know the hoodies. Are you guys ready for question two? Absolutely. Okay, who's the struggler? What? Jay Gilligan? No. <laughs> no. Oh, I know his name. No, they don't know his name, but I know who it is. I know who that is as well, I think. That's not Zach McAllister, is it? No. Oh, I know! Ah, ah, ah! Wait, 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 wait! Go on! Shout it out! It's Eric Lange cover quick, quick, quicks! <laughs> no, it's not him, no. Okay. Come on, guys, you can do this! I can give you a hint. Yeah, sure. He is into cameras. Ari Roth. No. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Come on, guys, you can get this one. It's a it, is, is it the guy from Canada? <laughs> Correct, but what's his name? Oh, shit! What's his name? Ari <laughs> Norby Whitney. Yeah! Well done! Felix, oh, I'm impressed. Oh, that was <laughs> If that was a hard a one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's teaching at the Quebec Circus School. Yeah. I think. Is it? I knew that. The Quebec <laughs> Circus School. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready for question three? Absolutely. Again. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, should we Let's open it? it? Yeah, you can open it. Yeah. Okay, who's the juggler? Josh Horton. No. Alex Barron. Uh, Christian Van Vick. Correct. Oh. Well done. Are you guys ready for question four? Absolutely. Okay, <laughs> uh, tell me who this juggler is. Who said it first? Julius. I think it's Okay, so it's 2-1-1 one, one then, starting from Julius' <laughs> side. Okay, um, question 5. Mike Peter. No. Ah, oh, Ron Beery. No. Are we, are we rough? No. No. Uh, uh, Peter Arbo? No. Gustav Rosal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I'll give you a clue. Um, yeah. I think he studied in Doc for either three months or six months, but he lives in Canada now, I think. Okay. Well, it's not Nathan, is it? Nathan Biggs Penton. It is, yes, well done. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm impressed. Right, are you guys ready for uh, the next set of questions? Yep. Yep. Um, um, how many 2x's does Maze do in this sequence? Oh, oh shit. But not including the first behind the back pass. Okay. And the closest answer wins. Okay. 51? I, I'll go with 34. Okay, I go with uh, 48. 
The correct answer is 54. Felix, you win. What? So many! Right, so for question 7 guys, it is, this is a trick by Komi Aoki from Japan and you have to tell me what site swap is he doing. So should we shout it out? Shout should it out. Say? The first person who shouts it out gets the answer, yeah? 3, 2, 1. <laughs> what? Again? Okay, we will watch it again. Yeah, go for it, yeah. Isn't it 5 3 1? Correct! Look how well done, man, I'm very it's impressed. The, oh, the 5 is a bit weird. It's a very fudgy pattern. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> right. Batman, are you ready for question 8? Okay. Absolutely. Let's do it. This next uh, sequence is by Kenny Chian. Uh, from, um, his question is very hard, so again, the closest answer wins. How many single spins does Kenny do? Fifty-seven? Seventy-two. I'll go with eighty-five. Okay, the answer is... Seventy-four. So, so, Julius, you get a point. Okay, for this next question, um, this is a small sequence by Isaac Larange from Norway. Uh, the question is... How many times does Isaac collect more than one ball in his hands in the sequence? Three, two, one, go. Eleven. Nine. Twelve. The answer is eleven. <laughs> Guys, I'm very it's very close, it's three 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 at the moment. Okay. Um so that's the end of the, the videos questions. So now we're gonna look at three more questions which are all by Ivan Schronstad. <laughs> um and you have to you're gonna get a close shot a close up shot of his pattern. And you have to tell me what site swap you think it is. Yeah. So, question 10. What site swap is Ivan doing? Okay, 3, 2, 1. Eight, six. Uh, Julius got it right. Julius, I'm impressed. Are you guys ready for question 11? Absolutely. What site swap is Ivan doing with 5 bollocks? 6661. Six, no. Oh. Six six seven five one six seven five six one. Um, Julius, what did you say? Six six seven five one. Julius, I'm impressed, boss. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, what? Can you tell me what trick Ivan is doing again? Seven four four. Correct. I'm yeah. impressed. Um, so now we're moving on to the next, to the last three questions. Are you guys ready? Absolutely. You have to tell me where this wall is. Okay. 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 Good luck. Yeah. Uh, it's um. Oh, oh, oh. Norway, Oslo. No. Stockholm, Sweden. Scheiße. It's a. It's Sto Stockholm, no. Oh. Stockholm, Sweden. Stockholm's correct. Yes. Look at one point. It's uh, in West Peden's gym. Doch building. Yes. I think like if I get a point for Stockholm and he for dog, I think it's fine then. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay, a good job guys, I'm impressed. Question 14, um, that screenshot of the wall, what video was it taken from? The six times period from Patrick. Oh fuck, I just watched it like a week ago. What was it called? <laughs> 
Oof. Can we maybe maybe open question thirteen again just to see the walls? Is it two thousand nine? Yes. Yes. No, it was two thousand nine, I believe it was. Ah. Okay. Yeah, you can open question thirteen again to have a look. Yeah. Oh, I've got the I've got the video. I've got the video. Is it, is it like Peden in Sweden or something? No. Give us a hint. I give you a hint. It was Patrick's video. Oh, is that video, the screenshot? With a CK. Uh, Patrick with no CK. No CK. Hold up. Correct. You got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Julius, I'm impressed, boss. Okay, are you guys ready yes. for the last question? This is a screenshot from a video. As soon as you open it up, the first person to shout out what video it's screenshotted from gets a point. Good luck. Okay. Um, Alexander Kublikov, where's Petra? Julius, I'm what? impressed. So, so the final score is Felix. You've got a three points. I'm very impressed. <laughs> you can add that to the points from the last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luca, you've got five points. Well done, boss. And Julius, you're the chicken willy of the year. You have eight chicken points. Willy. Very impressed boss, very impressed. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks so much for taking part, I hope you enjoyed it. It was so much fun, it was great. Everyone was watching, what? Don't need to fight the devil, the zombies die. Beware of the eggs though. episode 2 we hope you enjoyed it uh, just to let you know we will be putting up the previous episode online on YouTube um, every time the next episode is out for download out on my YouTube channel and will also be embedded into an IGA e-juggle article so you can watch them there thank you so much for downloading um, we hope you look forward to the last episode, episode 3, which is coming out on the 30th of November. Um, thank you all so much for all your kind comments and everything. Um, we are amazing, the German community is amazing. Let's keep going and we'll see you in the next one.